We are continuing with our inspirational true story series and joining us on the Harvey Norman couch is Simone Butler. 14 years ago, Simone survived a samurai sword attack from her abusive partner Anton Dixon. She has since become a survivor spokesperson for the New Zealand Women's Refuge and has now published her book, Double Edged Sword, which details her story of survival. Welcome, Simone. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. First up, Tony tried to decapitate you, didn't he? He did, yeah. And you've got the scars to show. I, yeah, lots of them. What happened? Um, he came at me with, my sword, with a sword and I put my arms up to protect my head and that one came off and I caught it and that one was sliced vertically through there, through there and then off there. Um, and then I've got ones up here and here because he was actually aiming for my head. Um, Gosh, it's, 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 and you speak about it so calmly, but obviously... I've done a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, I bet you have, I bet yeah. you have. What, what was Anton like when you first met him? When I first met him, annoying um, and, um, and a bit creepy. And then eventually um, he became charming and funny and he was really, really into me and I hadn't experienced that before. And, um, and so I sort of got all carried away in his um, love bomb, I guess. Right. And, um, and then it all just went from there. When you look back now, obviously hindsight, are there any warning signs that you thought? There were always warning signs. Um, I Some I tried to heed and I couldn't just because of the situation I was in or he just wouldn't leave me alone. Um, and then others, they it ended up that sort of that my, my red flashing light sort of stopped um, after a while. Had it been going on for a while? When I look back, I see that the entire relationship had a measure of control and abuse and manipulation, but I didn't realise that at the time. Everything was very subtle. And, um, and again, with the control that came in, I thought it was just that he missed me and he really wanted to see me, rather than he was putting time limits on what I was allowed to do and who I was allowed to see. So what was your childhood like? Just going back a few steps um, to put it into context. So my childhood, I actually thought that my childhood was awesome and writing this book I went, oh okay, some things possibly weren't quite that good. Um, so my mum did the best that she could with what she had but she was raised in a violent home and as was her mother and, um, and a very British stuff upper lip, you know, you don't talk about what goes on behind closed doors and um, and she was raised in a culture where the man was just slapped on the wrist and nobody wanted to interfere and, um, and you know, things between a man and a wife and, um, and it was just normal, you know, men were allowed to treat their women however they wanted. And that's not normal at all. It no, well, shouldn't be normal. it's not. Did you ever, I mean, I'm sure you, you don't see yourself as becoming part of an abusive relationship when you're younger, do you? It's just no, I never thought I would. I've, I've always considered myself quite strong and independent and I was... Um, the first one to stand up to bullies if my friends were being bullied and so I, I never expected it to happen to me at all um, but I, I had issues with self-worth and feeling worthless and, um, and not being good enough and not being lovable and things and so then when he swooped in um, and he was very attentive and very charming and stuff it, um, yeah, it all got a bit confusing. Did your friends try and help out? Uh, some of them certainly um, certainly warned me against him and you know wished that they had have said more or done more but there wasn't really anything anybody could do it you know I was 22 and I thought I was in love. Yeah. Mm. Um. <laughs> was writing I guess this book and putting it together obviously it would have been quite traumatic reliving some uh, things but was it part of it the... was cathartic it was the yeah. whole healing journey I mean yeah. it wasn't the whole healing journey because I, I did lots of other things but I I didn't start writing a book I started writing journals like journal I had my head was a mess and mm. so I started writing for catharsis. I needed to make order out of the chaos. And so I started writing and then I just kept writing and kept writing and kept writing. And I'd always had journals. So I was lucky enough that when I decided to turn it into a book and I sat down with my co-writer who was phenomenal and, um, and really good at the actual writing stuff. Like I'm a good writer and I journal and things, but I have no technical ability. And, um, and so when I sat down with her, we had source material back from the year that I'd met Tony. So that was really interesting to go back through that. And really so, useful too. Yeah, and there were, there were confronting things in it, but 
the way that I view the world is whenever something comes up um, or, or is triggered or anything, that's an opportunity to heal and grow. Mm. So if, if something did come up while I was writing, um, and especially in the last 18 months that we were putting it together, then I was like, okay, so I've got three things that I need to work through. You know, um, I can feel your strength from oh, here. Thank you. Yeah. And you're a holistic therapist. I yeah. am. Yeah, I'm a spiritual counselor and holistic therapist. I'm um, a qualified naturopath, so everything that I do has a naturopathic sort of in the background. But I, I concentrate on the metaphysical healing, so really helping people to sort out their mind and their emotions um, and the psychological side of things. When people um, come to see you, you're like, trust me, honey, I know how to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like I've been to hell. I know how to get there. I know how to get out. Okay, so w what can I do to help somebody out who perhaps is, you know, looking for assistance or somebody watching right now is looking to take the next steps to help somebody out? What do they okay. do? Okay, so if you want to help somebody Somebody, first of all, you need to come at them in a very um, non-judgmental way. You need to um, have empathy and compassion um, and not try to control them. Like if you're like, you have to leave him because this is a nice say that you have to do this, like that's just changing one version of control for another. Right. So um, you need to come at them with non-judgment and with compassion. But also, if you are worried about a friend, I would say, look at some literature, go online, look at Women's Refuge, look at RPE, um, Shakti, a few other things and see they have really good resources to help you. Um, and there are people that you can call that will help you as well. You know, we can't do everything by ourselves. And, um, and if you are worried about a friend, um, the, more, um, the more resources you have, the better equipped you'll be. Mm. Well, fantastic story. And, um, mm. you know, uh, I guess part of you helping with Women's Refuge is wanting to give back. Is that it is, part actually, of the process? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually giving a portion of um, a small percentage of proceeds um, of profits to Women's Refuge from the book. And I keep forgetting to tell everybody that. <laughs> you should really um, do that. But so I never used Women's Refuge. I was too scared, um, I was too proud, too whatever, and I didn't ask for help. And so. Um, I think it's really important for these women that are asking for help that they have a safe place to go, that then they have access to counselling, maybe free education. I mean, the TIA was abolished, but that would have been amazing um, for these women, you know, and that was how I managed to get myself back on my feet. Mm. Um, do, do you feel stronger now? Absolutely. Right. Like, I'm pretty fearless and too. You're going to get a lot of information, a lot of interest in this book mm. too, globally. I mean, you've got um, you've got the BBC talking to you as well, I many do. things. I think it's going to be, it's a great read and I think it's going to really impact a lot of people. You're going to Thank help you. a lot of people. Yeah, I, re I hope so. Um, I actually feel like it's bigger than me, like it's, it is my story, but really it's a universal story um, about abuse and healing and hope. And um, well, thank you for sharing. Honestly, really appreciate it. You're doing some amazing things, as thank we you. said right at the start, an inspiring story, and that's why we have her on the show, Double Edged Sword. The Simone Butler story is available from all good bookstores or online now. <laughs>